Nick, most scientists believe their universe is filled with intelligent life because there's so many possibilities, so many billions of galaxies and even more stars and planets. Yet we don't see any evidence of it, but most people dismiss that. I believe that the question is exceedingly important probe of the nature of this universe. Are there enormous numbers of intelligent life forms, or are we close to unique? Mm -hmm. How can we begin to think about this issue statistically from the evidence we see? Well, the two possibilities um, that we haven't seen any uh, extraterrestrial intelligences coming here just because uh, they are uh, uh, too far away is consistent with there being a lot of them. I mean, if the universe is infinite, you might have uh, it containing maybe an infinite number of extraterrestrial civilizations, but it's still perfectly easy to explain why we haven't seen any, which is that if they are so rare that they are scattered at huge cosmic distances, that would explain the observed phenomena. So, what I believe is that the most, the, the simplest explanation for why the universe appears empty is that the evolution of intelligent life is very hard. Um, so, it's, intelligent life is very uh, rare. And that fits all the evidence we have. Uh, it seems a perfectly simple natural explanation. Um, and there is really no need to concoct complicated scenarios where there is a big conspiracy that all the aliens have where they will keep us in a zoo. And, uh, you know, those things are logical possibilities. But why should intelligent life be easy to evolve in the first place? Absolutely no reason to think it. Uh, all we know is that it happened here, the one place we have looked. So that might suggest if it happens in one out of one case, it's likely. But, of course, there is this observation selection effect which guarantees that no matter how unlikely it is, you know, if there are enough planets, it's going to happen somewhere, and those are the planets we would find ourselves on. Even if they were one in a billion, 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 billion planets, you know, those would be exactly the places all life would look at, and they would think that it was remarkable that life evolved there. But, of course, uh, the observation selection effect guarantees that. So we can't infer from the fact that life evolved here, therefore it's fairly easy for life to evolve on any given planet. Um, and so, so that, that, to me, seems to answer the, um, the Fermi paradox. Um, it's not really a paradox, because there is no... What is the Fermi paradox? Well, the Fermi paradox is sort of, why is the sky empty? Why haven't we been visited by aliens? Um, and it's a and misnomer, should... because a paradox is supposed to be where there are two arguments that each seem compelling, but that are sort of in conflict with one another. But here, there's just an observation that the sky is empty, but there is no reason to think it shouldn't be. Well, the conflict is is that certainly most scientists think that the, the uh, observable universe is populated with billions of planets and the likelihood of, of even a small percentage of them and uh, having life, the famous Drake equation, uh, many feel will yield very high numbers of intelligent uh, life forms. I mean, it's certainly true that there are lots of planets, but... The thing you've got to plug into the so-called Drake equation to get anything out is the probability that any one of those planets will produce intelligent life. That's an unknown quantity. And we have almost no constraints on what the magnitude of that quantity is. Um, and I think possibly what is driving the people who think that it can't be that small is that they overlook this observation selection effect, that the one sample we have, this planet, life evolved, so it seems fairly easy. Yeah. Uh, but that misses the point that even if it was ridiculously improbable, we would still find ourselves standing on a planet where that improbability occurred. If there are sufficiently many planets, it was bound to happen somewhere. So the fact that life evolves here tells us almost nothing about the probability of life evolving. Um, on the contrary, there are lo if you look more in detail at how evolution happened on this planet, there are features of that process that makes it perfectly reasonable to think that it could involve extreme coincidences. You know, take the stage from prokaryotic to eukaryotic life forms, from simple cells to more complicated cells. 
as far as we can tell from the uh, geological record, there might have been a period of over one and a half billion years during which nothing obvious happened. So it might just have been that for one and a half billion years, evolution was just playing around with random combinations and uh, eventually it got lucky. And here it happened within one and a half billion years or within 1.8 billion years, but maybe the expected time to get lucky in that random recombination could be you know, trillions of years, so longer than the universe of the life, uh, uh, longer than the lifetime of the universe. If there are sufficiently many planets, it's going to happen somewhere, and on all the planets where it happens, it's got to happen within the lifetime of that planet, which is limited by the lifetime of its sun. Um, and so if one overlooks the observation selection effect, one might well be met, misled to believe that this gives us some reason to think intelligent life evolves quite easily. But once you realize that, uh, then there is no reason to think that uh, the evolution is, is at all easy. And if you think about it, I mean, we've never had any sort of complexity increasing evolutionary step take place in a lab or being observed in real time. Um, and there are these big evolutionary periods during which we don't see a gradual increment, but that might just have been a leap. And Suppose we would find life uh, in the solar system. We've uh, looked at Mars, some people think Europa. There was uh, a few years ago uh, a little bit of a flurry with some micro microscopic uh, analysis of a Mars meteorite that people thought might have been some fossilized life. Uh, what about that? Yeah, that would be bad news. Bad news? Why? Horrible. Most people, well, most people would be excited about would. that. The everybody whole world would was be very excited. enthusiastic. I would be excited. Everybody else would be celebrating. But you but said that bad news. Why. Yeah. Bad news. Why? So suppose we go to Mars. We pick up a sample, and we find that there is some primitive single-cell life form that has gone extinct that lived there once. So scientifically, it would be very interesting, obviously. But um, it would be bad news for this reason. We know that there are lots of planets in the universe. Billions. Um, and we also know that we haven't seen any extraterrestrials coming here and visiting us. So somewhere between there being a planet and there being a space colonizing civilization, there is a great filter, an improbability filter, like a stage which most... Can't get through. Get, you can't get through, or where very, very few get through. Um, so there are basically two possibilities. The great filter could be between where you have a planet and where you have a civilization like ours. Or you could have the great filter being between a civilization like ours and a space colonizing civilization. So either before us or after us. Now, we sure don't want the filter to be after us because that means that we are soon about to encounter it and then we'll almost certainly go extinct. You know, maybe there is some dangerous technology that all sufficiently advanced civilization discover and they destroy themselves or whatever. So we must hope that the filter is uh, you know, behind us, that we have already been lucky and come through it. Um, but if we discover life that evolved independently of life on Earth, on some, like on Mars, um, then that rules out part of the place where the filter could be. So... If, say, multicellular life forms had evolved independently on two planets in the solar system, Mars and Earth... Then it's not a filter. Then, then it can't be that hard. So the great filter then couldn't be in the first part of this, not between planet and multicellular life. Now, we could still hope that it would be between multicellular life and where we are now, but that would be a much smaller part remaining. So the probability that it's after us would increase. So if we find... You know, some simple single cellular life form on Mars that went extinct. That's bad news. But if we were to find some, I don't know, some extinct rodents or something more <laughs> complicated, that would be horrible news. Because that would show that, with all probability, the filter is uh, after us and we might get to it very soon. That's my reasoning why I hope that if we find no trace of life uh, anywhere, that's good. Uh, it, it, it makes it much more probable that, that our own future will be prosperous.